Sandra Brown is the queen of the romantic suspense novel. Her new one is called Mean Streak, and she joins us live this morning to talk all about it. Good morning, Sandra. Good morning, Brad. You know, you how to you know how to take readers on a ride. In this oh. one though, it starts off with love and I'm not sure where it goes from there because <laughs> What happens to this character does not seem like love at all. Tell me about it. <laughs> well, it was a little different plot for me because it does rather it start out rather strangely. Uh, it was just one of those ideas that popped into my head, and I just saw this scene in my mind. I didn't know who these people were, didn't know how they got into that situation, but I could not wait to find out. And so I figured if I felt that way about it, then the reader would too. And you'll just have to read it to find out what happens to them. <laughs> You know, the thing that, that, that I understand is that, you know, things aren't always they, as they seem, you know, relationships change, and that's what, you know, happens in real life. But when somebody in a critical situation like this, man, you really need to know who your friends or your lovers, whoever, what, what they're up to, right? That's right. Uh, the tension and the suspense kind of ratchets up the romance, and the romance kind of intensifies the suspense and the peril of the situation that they're in. Uh, these two people, my characters, uh, the hero remains nameless through most of the book, but my heroine, Emery, gets kind of thrust into this adventure in the mountains all alone, and uh, she has to fend for herself. She has has to outsmart everyone else in the book, including the hero. So I really put her through through a grueling task in this book. You talked about coming up with the story. Do you really visualize those characters? Do you really, Very. can you almost see them going through this as you're writing the book and, and, and they're kind of taking you on the ride? Very much so. Um, I, I always envision like a scene. It's like a stage setting and my characters walk into the scene and I watch it and I write down what they say and what they do. And I know that sounds rather odd, um, but I, I, I like for my characters to kind of take over the story. I have a, a vague idea of what it's going to be and I know where I'm going, but I don't know how I'm going to get there. So that's the fun of being a fiction writer. I get to go to work and wait and see what happens every single day and uh, it makes it fun for me and therefore I, I think it makes it fun for the reader. I like the spontaneity that the characters sometimes take upon themselves. I think your dialogue is really natural. It seems when you're reading this, it almost seems like you're kind of sitting there in the room and you're just looking to your left or your right and you're seeing these characters chat out because they're, they're, they're going through a conversation that seems very, very natural even though they're in a weird place at that point. Well, I like for it to sound the way that people talk. You know, we speak in incomplete sentences. We, we talk over each other. We interrupt. And I think for a conversation to really read true, that's the way it needs to be written. And often after I've written it, I will just do the voices out loud and try to read it the way I hear it in my head, hoping that I'm conveying that to the reader. Because you can, you can uh, get across a lot of information through conversation and you can convey a lot of emotion. Is someone angry? Is someone sad? Is someone envious? Is someone furious? And and all of those things, it, it really is important that you choose just the right words for them to say and the way in which they say them. Well, we can kind of envision that. I hope we're never caught in a situation uh, Emory is in this. <laughs> no, do it's I. A real pleasure speaking with you. Yeah, really. <laughs> Read it. Don't get in her situation. We appreciate your time this morning. Wish you best of luck. Thank you, Brad. Thank you.